And I think in a world which focuses a lot on youth and beauty, um, I really wanted to make it a film about a character that, you know, was not in that world and, and very stuck in her own world and not really moving forward. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Janice Pugh and I am the writer and director of Chuck Chuck Baby. Chuck Chuck Baby is a musical film, but not as you know it, about love and loss and is a real celebration of female friendship in all its forms. The film was shot in my hometown of Flintshire and really celebrates small communities and friendship and of course love. For me, making this film was so important for several reasons. I kind of felt the world was lacking a bit of love and we all needed a little bit of love in our lives. And especially, I wanted to really platform women's voices, specifically working women's voices from small communities. I was brought up in these communities by incredible women and I just don't feel we see enough of them on camera. The musical element to the film starts right from the writing process. I have used this form of, of musicality in my work for a very long time. Now, we can have debates on what is a musical, what is not a musical. We don't burst into song. We kind of use the music in a very subtle way. I've always used it as part of the narrative, uh, the storytelling process, uh, part of, of kind of informing the audience of the actors state of emotion so whether that be backstory or present emotion and it really is you know when I was talking to the girls about the singing and that they were kind of oh god god nervous it really is about approaching this as we approach music ourselves how we use it as a very personal relationship to to us um as as human beings and it's it's you know it's never about bursting into song it really is about allowing the music to kind of touch your heart and tell your story so if you think about how we use music in a breakup or falling in love or you know grief um, it's that same way it's really kind of playing the song and letting it touch our hearts and that for me was was kind of how we, we we've always approached it and for the actors again it was that kind of okay, it's, uh, it, it's kind of stepping back and taking away that obvious kind of let's burst into song. But, you know, the process writing from the beginning of writing the song into the script, if I'm not getting goosebumps when I feel the music should be spoken or when it should be uh, sung out, then you won't either as the audience. And I think this is the process where we take a step back with the actor and go, right, we have to feel it exactly the same way as everybody feels music in their own personal space. I'm very much aware of the cost of music. I also knew the Neil Diamond was probably going to bankrupt us or not I kind of work and everybody would say, no, 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 you can't have it. Um, we had some great, uh, you know, people working on the clearance of that. And um, in the end, I wrote a letter to Neil Diamond, um, a very personal letter about my mother. Um, who had loved, loved, loved Neil Diamond. And, you know, for me, it was just, you know, tell, saying to him, look, I went to see you in concert. Uh, my mother at the time was very ill. I, I called my mother from the mobile uh, phone so she could listen to his concert. And I explained that to him in a letter and uh, he was very generous with us. So thank you, Neil. I think when, when we talk about British working class films, there's always a kind of oh, kitchen sink kind of bleakness to it. Um, again, with, with my work, I've always approached it very much with colour um, because it's my background. And for me, my personal background was very joyous and full of colour. Um, we may have just had a few too many chips, but that's life. But I've always seen a beautiful light of being brought up as a working class girl, you know. Um, despite the, um, the hardships of life, there was a lot of co colour going on. There was a lot of, you know, I relate colour to humour, to characters. Um, and I, you know, for me, my environment was just always very colourful. 
uh, despite the hardships. And I think we need to celebrate that more. And and I think hearing from working class people who, who make cinema, um, you know, it's not all the bleak, dreaded, heavy clouded, you know, there's there's also a, a beautiful heartbeat to um to that to, to that kind of there's a great sense of freedom um for me in, 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 in those worlds and specifically mine growing up there was a sense of freedom of and humour and and love and for me that represents all the colours uh, that we kind of display uh, in the film and the heart the beating heart of you know what I write about is that that core of of these women who whose lives are difficult but there's there's humour in it and there's brightness and there's laughter. I think there's a lot of women in the world and I include myself and my own mother and my own sisters who feel very much, you know, at a certain age, a little bit invisible. Um, and I really wanted to write about a character in her 40s whose life just felt a little bit stuck. And I think in a world which focuses a lot on youth and beauty. Um, I really wanted to make it a film about a character that, you know, was not in that world and, and very stuck in her own world and not really moving forward, not no fault to her own. And, you know, I think if we go back and, you know, for me, looking at the women I was brought up with, they had this amazing sense of 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 life, but I always felt they were kind of pulled back and held up because of the, the environment they, that surrounded them and social environment, political environment, that their um, uniqueness was never really displayed. So it was really about making a film about this woman in her 40s who felt very kind of stuck in a world she felt very much invisible in. So I think... There's a lot of us out there and I think we need to have more of these women on our screen. You know, these women who I feel are very much let down by, you know, society um, and women who are just brilliant, who never get to show it. I think from the moment I started writing Chuck Chuck Baby, it was very important that I had two characters, two women who were brought up in very difficult circumstances. So, you know... We had the Helen character and then we had the Joanne character, a girl brought up in a very difficult, painful uh, um, um, childhood that obviously affected her life and it affected her moving forward. And not just from opening her heart, but really opening up to anything. Um, the damage that was done to her in her childhood as you know, she's carried through to her adulthood. So I wanted to kind of show these women, because there's a lot of us who, who, who kind of walk around this world um, with that kind of darkness in our past that has affected our, our, our upbringings. And I think Joanne represents this, this kind of brave, solid kind of female who, who, wants, to, who wants to break down these, these kind of chains that have kept her kind of from loving something. Um, from loving another human being. And I think she manages to, to break all those down once she kind of lets go of her past. Chuck Chuck Baby is shot in my home uh, kind of town of Flintshire. It's shot around the areas of places I grew up and played in as, as a young child. And I kind of always felt the landscape of that area shaped my personality, my humour, and also the people who live there, you know, you're, you know, you're surrounded by this, these incredible skies and uh, you feel like you're at the end of the world. Um, and, the, the, you know, there's, there's some kind of the environment is quite harsh, but there's a, there's a, there's a beauty to it as well. We knew it was never going to be easy because, you know, specifically if you look at Mushroom Mountain, um, you know, getting equipment up there, crew up there, a place to have a cup of tea, you know. These, you know, they're quite, they're places that are not used very often for, for, for cinema. So, you know, the, these are little areas, pots of like landscape where nobody really goes or goes to. And for me, that was kind of um, the, the beauty in it. It's kind of untouched. 
Um, I think our hardest bit was was the the ship in the film, um, where there's no through road, so it really was quad bikes and God help you all in the mud. But that's the fun of it, you know. It's these environments that I really feel independent cinema shines because, you know, we're showing a, a piece of the world I think that people don't really often get to see, um, and um, you know, the landscape for me will always make my heart thump because it has that gives me a kind of cinematic feel that I've always had since I was little. I think writing about, um, I hate saying the word middle age because I stand there myself in that, in that kind of age bracket. I just felt it was so important to write about women at this age. And it's not, you know, it's not about youth and coming through something. It really is about women flowering um, and I think, you know, we all flower at a certain age. And for me, the women in this film flower at, you know, their middle age and they flower with love and friendship. And I think, you know, we don't see enough of that on screen. We don't see enough of these women, you know, we don't celebrate them at that age. And I think if we tell stories of women, you know, at uh, in our 40s and we've, we've got so much life behind us and there's so much to uh, to say. Looking back, you know, it, there was a lot of pressure to change the age of the of of the women, but then there was there was probably little story left to say. But for me, it's approaching using my own life and approaching it to my characters. You know, that is my age, and that's the characters I'm going to write about. Obviously, during the making of Chuck Chuck Baby, no real chickens were harmed. Um, it was a very uh, our production designer, Caroline Steiner, is pure vegan, um, but fell in love with the script and said, I've got to work on this film. And for obvious reasons, we don't use real chickens. They are handmade, um, took a long time. Um, and uh, I think, you know, for me, I kind of said to Caroline, I just want the pink, the pinky flesh you know, to come through. And we, we knew we weren't going to, to use real chickens, but we have a lot of them that are, a little bit kind of harder and we had three main floppy more floppy made chickens for the for the close-ups um but um again the process of that was 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 packing these chickens and they kept sticking to the plastic bags <laughs> so we had to kind of use a bit of kind of i hate saying it oil just to kind of shove them in the bag a lot easier so the process of of the smacking them and cracking them and you know and, and put them in the bag and, and stapling them shut was was something, again, we had to work with the actors with because it's very difficult to do all that choreographed movement and your lines, um, but they did it brilliantly. Um, but again, the chickens, perfect. Caroline Steiner and her team just made these incredible chickens that we could just throw in the air, bounce around, nobody was harmed. My wonderful editor, uh, Rebecca Lloyd, Aka Becca Lloyd, we had a conversation um, and I think the two of us like to work a certain way and that is for Becca to come on the shoot. Becca likes doing that as well because I think there's a, there's a good sense of how your set feels, how you know the environment plays a huge part in, in the film itself. Um, so Becca was on set with us um, right from the beginning of the shoot and... Um, I always knew it was going to be difficult because we don't go over three takes in this film. We just didn't have the time or the budget. So Rebecca really had a, a work cut out. And from that moment, you know, we start working together and, um, you know, produce what we, what we set out to do. But I think for me, it's really important to have the editor with you when you're shooting so they get a real sense of the environment and the story you're trying to tell. You know, even though um, Chuck Chuck Baby is very much a British independent uh, film, it really has travelled around the globe, and um, it's it's kind of, for me, it's 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 a film that has those universal themes of love, loss, and you know, grief. And I always thought to myself, how is it going to translate? You know, when we got into Toronto, I was thinking, oh my God. You know, Toronto, how is it going to, you know, how will it react to a, a film, you know, a British film shot in small town, uh, North Wales? And, you know, the response was enormous. And I, you know, and as it's kind of gone from 
you know, Toronto, Palm Springs, Zurich, you can kind of see how audiences are connecting to the heart of it because the heart of it, I think, is so universal. You know, the subject matters are so universal of all the things that affect us as, as, as a human race. And I think for every, every big city, you know, um, New York, Toronto, um, there is a sense of, you know, there's, there, is, there are those small pockets of communities that are Chuck Chuck baby. Um, and I think that's why it's kind of worked traveling around the world um, is, is, is the universal themes of love, life and loss.